Let's get right into it. Number 10. The Sugar High Lie Every parent thinks giving their kids sugar turns them into a tiny tornado. But that idea is completely wrong. Scientists tested this. They gave some kids sugar. Others got fake sugar. And neither the kids nor their parents knew who got what. The result was absolutely nothing. The sugar kids weren't any more hyper than the no-sugar kids. But when parents thought their kids had sugar, they suddenly started seeing them as hyperactive. They watched their kids like hawks, waiting for any sign of energetic behavior. Kid jumps once, they blame the sugar. Kid laughs, sugar rush. This whole thing started back in the 1,970 seconds, when a doctor claimed food additives were making kids hyperactive. Parents jumped on that idea immediately. A kid bouncing off the walls at a birthday party probably has more to do with being at a birthday party than the cake they just ate. They're excited, playing with friends, maybe sleep deprived. Those kids would be just as hyper if you gave them sugar-free cake. Number nine, you've probably heard that humans only use 10% of their brains. That's about as true as saying fish only use 10% of the ocean. This myth is so popular that Hollywood made entire movies about it. The ones where someone takes a magic pill and suddenly they're solving quantum physics while doing backflips. Your brain is already going full throttle all the time. Scientists can watch brains light up in real time using special scanners, and they see activity everywhere, all the time. Even when you're sleeping, your brain is working. It's controlling your breathing, managing your heartbeat, and replaying embarrassing memories. Your brain only makes up 2% of your body weight, but this overachiever uses 20% of your body's energy. That's like having a tiny space heater that eats all your electricity. If 90% of your brain was really doing nothing, evolution would have removed it ages ago. Nature doesn't keep useless stuff around. The proof is what happens when any tiny part of the brain gets damaged. Even a small injury can cause major problems. This 10% myth likely came from a Harvard researcher in the 1800s who said people weren't living up to their full potential. Then someone misinterpreted that to mean we only use 10% of our brain. Number 8. Pennies from heaven won't kill you. You've probably heard that a penny dropped from the Empire State Building could punch through someone's skull. That's not true. When someone drops a penny from up high, it starts falling, picking up speed thanks to gravity. But then air resistance kicks in. Air isn't empty space. It pushes back against anything moving through it too fast. The penny hits these air molecules and starts tumbling. By the time it falls about 50 feet, it reaches terminal velocity, which is just 25 miles per hour. That's slower than an average bicycle rider. Getting hit by a penny at that speed would feel like someone flicking you. Annoying, but not fatal. If you dropped that same penny in a vacuum, like space, it would reach speeds over 200 miles per hour. But down here on Earth, you're more likely to get seriously hurt by a falling ballpoint pen. Those are aerodynamic enough to act like tiny arrows. Number 7. Lightning's repeat offender status. The saying, lightning never strikes the same place twice is wrong. The Empire State Building gets hit by lightning around 25 times every year. There was a park ranger named Roy Sullivan who got struck by lightning seven different times. They called him the human lightning rod. He survived all seven strikes. After the fourth strike, his co-workers started avoiding him during storms. Lightning often hits the same tall objects repeatedly. If you're the tallest thing around, like a lone tree in a field, you're basically a target during a storm. Lightning can strike miles away from the actual storm. These are called bolts from the blue because they can come out of a clear blue sky. You could be out there when the sky looks clear and suddenly lightning strikes. Number six, Vikings left their horns at home. Vikings never wore horned helmets into battle. This whole horned helmet thing was made up by theater costume designers in the 1800s. They were designing costumes for opera performances and thought horns looked dramatic. They accidentally created one of history's biggest fashion lies. Going into battle wearing something that gives your enemy two perfect handles to grab is not practical. Or the horns could get stuck on tree branches during a raid. The real Viking helmets that archaeologists have found were plain protective gear. Maybe with a nose guard. They did find some horned helmets in Denmark. But these were from 3,000 years before the Vikings. These ancient helmets weren't for fighting. They were ceremonial. Like an ancient crown. Some opera costume designers from the 1800s likely saw these ancient ceremonial helmets and thought, perfect, let's make the Vikings wear these. Now millions of people think Vikings ran around with horns on their heads. Number 5. Your razor isn't making you hairier. You've probably heard that shaving makes your hair grow back thicker and darker. That's complete nonsense. When you shave, you're giving each hair a tiny flat top haircut. Imagine cutting a tree straight across with a chainsaw. That stump feels rougher than the natural tapered end of a branch. 
Same thing happens with your hair. When it grows back, it feels thicker because you've created thousands of tiny flat-topped hair stumps. Scientists have studied this for decades. They found shaving has zero effect on your hair growth. Your hair's thickness, color, and growth rate are locked in by your genes. That razor isn't reprogramming your DNA. If shaving really made hair grow thicker, every balding guy would be shaving their head daily. We'd have found the cure for baldness in a can of shaving cream, but Jeff Bezos is still bald. Despite being able to afford infinite expensive razors, the myth persists because the stubble feels convincing when it grows back. It's the same old hair, just with a blunt end. Number four, swim whenever you want. Your mom probably told you to wait 30 minutes after eating before swimming, warning you'd get cramps and drown. This myth is so widespread, even lifeguards used to enforce it, but there's zero evidence swimming after eating is dangerous. Not a single documented case exists of someone drowning because they ate before diving in. The theory was that after eating, blood rushes to your stomach for digestion, leaving arms and legs without enough blood, causing cramps. But our bodies can handle both digestion and swimming. You might get a minor cramp if you swim intensely right after a huge meal, similar to running after eating. The American Red Cross confirms this isn't a real danger. Competitive swimmers actually eat during their training sessions. Maybe don't eat an entire pizza right before intense swimming. Number three, your head isn't a heat chimney. Your mom probably told you, put on a hat or you'll freeze to death. That whole, you lose 50% of your body heat through your head thing is nonsense. This myth started with an old army survival manual claiming 4045% of body heat escapes through your head. But in their test, they dressed people in full winter gear and left their heads exposed. Of course, most heat escaped through their heads. It was the only part not covered. Your head makes up about 10% of your body's surface area, so it can only lose about 10% of your body heat. Heat loss is actually proportional to whatever skin is exposed. Your head might feel extra cold because it has more blood vessels close to the surface, but you're not actually losing significantly more heat there compared to other exposed body parts. The only time this advice actually makes sense is for babies and small kids. Their heads are proportionally bigger compared to their bodies, so they do lose more heat up there. But for adults, your uncovered arms will lose just as much heat as your uncovered head. Number two, goldfish memory. Everyone says goldfish have a three second memory. That's complete nonsense. These fish are actually pretty smart. Scientists put goldfish in mazes. They not only solved them, but remembered the solution months later. These fish can even recognize faces. Imagine being a goldfish, swimming in your bowl, thinking, oh look, it's Dave again with the food. They can also learn tricks. Some goldfish trainers have taught them to do things like swim through hoops or play soccer. Some goldfish have learned to tell different pieces of music apart, and they can do all this with a brain smaller than a pea. Scientists think studying goldfish brains might help us understand human memory better. Number one, gum doesn't stick around for years. That story about swallowed gum staying in your stomach for seven years is a lie. When you swallow gum, it travels through your digestive system just like any other food. The only difference is that your body can't break it down. Think of gum like corn kernels. It just passes right through. Most gum is out of your system within one to two days. It doesn't stick to your insides. Your stomach is constantly moving and pushing stuff along. And those stories about gum causing problems, unless you're swallowing huge amounts of gum constantly, you're probably fine. Humans have been chewing random stuff for thousands of years. Ancient Greeks chewed tree resin. Mayans chewed chicle. None of them died from seven years of gum buildup. Gum won't stick in your stomach, but it can stick on sidewalks for years. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.